Salam alaikum. The subcuticular uh, stitch, uh, sometimes called the intradermal stitch or suture, is one of the common suture lines that can be employed particularly in skin wounds and exposed areas like the face. It's formed up of the usual three elements of any continuous suture line. It starts with an anchoring stitch at the apex of the wound at one side. Uh, you'd want to anchor your suture line in the depth of the wound in here by taking a suture and the uh, connective tissues in the subcutaneous space and retrieving the needle to um, reach the apex of the wound in the correct plane, which is the plane between the epidermis and the upper part of the dermis. So it, it should be lying in that plane all through. Uh, below the epidermal level. Once you have achieved the first stitch, the, uh, the anchoring stitch, uh, then horizontal bites would be taken in this plane uh, between um, the first level and the second level on one side. Then you move to the other side and take another bite between the second and the third level and then you move again to the first and go on like this uh, having uh, horizontal bites on the one side and then crossing to the other side to take horizontal bites again and moving across the wound edge perpendicular to it from one side to the other until you reach the apex of the wound on the other side where the suture line would be again fixed up by a suture in the connective tissue, uh, you knot your second and final knot of the suture line and then retrieve the needle and pass it through the apex to any point in the skin about one centimeter from the apex where it can be cut flush down with the uh, skin level. The subcuticular stitch was employed in a variety of situations. Um, using variety of materials, including absorbable or non-absorbable sutures, uh, sometimes even in an interrupted rather than a continuous uh, pattern. Uh, but the usual now is to use uh, an absorbable suture line, a monofilament, to for the ease of its passage through the tissues, and continuous. Uh, the usual is to use a monocryl 4O or a 5O on a three over eight reverse cutting needle. One important issue about using the subcuticular stitch is that it should only be used in tension-free wounds. If there is any tension on the wound or if you expect tension later, then um, this particular stitch is not perhaps your best option. If there is any wound gapping, this can be sorted out by subcutaneous uh, sutures. Uh, subcutaneous sutures in the deeper part of the dermis and the upper part of the subcutaneous space can obliterate uh, dead spaces and provide enough um, support to the wound itself, as the subcuticular stitch does not offer too much uh, wound support. It does not resist tension well. Its main advantage is that by lying underneath the epidermis, and then there is no cross-hatching scarring uh, at the wound. And of course, it's useful uh, in patients, for example, prone to keloid formation. This will demonstrate how we start the intradermal of the subcuticular uh, stitch by anchoring it first into the apex of the wound on one side. You pass the needle into the subcutaneous tissue and take a bite and form uh, the knot. Remember, because you commonly will be using a synthetic material, you would need to, you need to secure the knot by uh, tying it several times. And then you cut the shorter of the two uh, ends of the suture, then you take the needle again, pass from the subcutaneous tissue plane to the proper plane, which is just underneath the epidermis in here, at the apex of the wound. And once this is achieved, you can retrieve the needle and you can start your suture from there. You have now the suture in the proper plane between the upper dermis and the epidermis,
and you take horizontal bytes in that plane which is now anchored to the deeper part of the uh, wound so you take horizontal bytes in the this plane on both sides moving forward from one side to the other perpendicular to the wound edge. Now just continue doing the same, taking horizontal bites and the proper plane just below the epidermis, making sure that you don't puncture the epidermal layer because that will produce an ugly deformity. And you move from one side to the other perpendicular to the wound edge you just want to go to start where the other um, the other bite has ended progressing forward from one one wound apex to the other you make sure that your bites are actually your uh, the suture lines are perpendicular to the wound and your bites are moving forward from where you finished the last bite otherwise the skin uh, uh, if you take it a little bit backwards and uh, then your last stitch then you get a little bit of uh, skin irregularity and this is continued in the same manner while approaching the wound apex on the, uh, on the other side of the wound. Again, taking the horizontal bites on one side, moving to the other, just at the same level. Progressing forward, perhaps one more bite to reach the apex on this side. And once this is achieved, once you've reached the apex, then you start about fixing the suture line on the other side of the uh, wound, much like we have anchored it at the very beginning. So this is a, a suture in the subcutaneous plane, and this is going to anchor the uh, suture line in the wound. Now, while retrieving the suture, the suture line, you would leave a loop and you can just suture, you can now tie the knot if that is uh, required, or you can use the Aberdeen knot here, using just uh, retrieving a part of the uh, suture through a loop and then forming another loop and knotting. And now you pass the uh, suture line, a part of the suture line again, and the newly formed loop and so on until you can uh, finalize your knot. The options at the end is uh, to form your final knot is either to tie uh, a loop of the sutures, again it's a single strand, uh, but that is going to form uh, a rather unsymmetrical and unbalanced knot um, or you can loop both ends and tie, but this is going to produce a bulky uh, knot at the end. Uh, that's why uh, the Aberdeen knot is preferred by uh, some. The Aberdeen knot is formed of successive consecutive loops uh, by a single strand. So there is no duplication at any of these loops. It's just a single strand looping progressively from one uh, loop to the other until it's finally knotted then you retrieve the needle through the final loop and pull on this strand and you would get a fairly stable and secure uh, knot if this is um, achieved well. This is just to demonstrate it. Again, you formed a loop and you pinched a bit of the suture through that loop, forming another loop. And you... You just go on doing this, uh, pinching a bit of the suture through the uh, through a lo the loop, uh, 
and that is going to form a new loop and finally you just pass the needle through the final uh, loop and pull and this will produce a fairly stable uh, knot so at the end of uh, the suture once the apex has been reached you are left with a loop on one side and a strand on the other side and you can either uh, tie that strand on the loop or you can employ the Aberdeen knot uh, and if you employ the Aberdeen knot you just retrieve uh, the needle into the final loop and once that is achieved you can pull on it now the next thing to do is to pass a suture below the knot so that it can bury the knot into the subcutaneous tissue and uh, get out on the skin surface about a centimeter from the apex of the wound and if you cut that suture flush with the surface uh, this will end up the uh, subcuticular stitch so by this we come to the end on this uh, presentation on the subcuticular stitch uh, it starts with the anchoring of the, uh, the stitch and the deeper part of the wound uh, retrieving the needle to the apex and starting the repetitive units of horizontal bites uh, alternating between the two sides and finally you fix the suture line at the other apex of the wound and either uh, tie on the loop or use the Aberdeen suture before retrieving the needle and the final part of the thread uh, it's supposed to provide excellent cosmetic results that's why it's fairly popular popular uh, particularly in the face salam alaikum